And at number 10, Princess Diana. The royal family is one of the most secretive organizations in the world. So everyone couldn't believe it when Princess Diana decided to expose all of her dirty secrets on TV in 1995 in an interview with BBC journalist Martin Bashir. The interview was after her divorce with Charles, when she was the most scared of the family. During the program, she revealed her struggles with disordered eating after Prince Charles made comments about her weight along with talking about her postpartum depression and the affair she knew Charles was having with Camilla. Diana even talked about her own love affair with her writing instructor, James Hewitt. Even worse, it was exposed years later that the reason Diana gave such a detailed interview is because she was being blackmailed by the journalist, Martin Bashir. Bashir acted in a quote, deceitful way and fake documents to obtain the interview, an inquiry by the BBC discovered. And at number nine, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore exposed herself, literally, during an interview with David Letterman. While doing the interview, Barrymore asked if she could dance for him. Letterman said yes, and all of a sudden, Drew was on top of his desk dancing around. Then she suddenly flashed him. She had her back turned to the audience who didn't see, but it was quite a shock to Letterman. Apparently, it was Letterman's birthday, and Barrymore said this was her present to him. This was during the time that Barrymore was having a rebellious streak, and she had just posed for Playboy and was feeling very open about her body. Barrymore revealed years later that the moment was not planned, and while they were talking, she had a light bulb moment and wanted to dance. And at number eight, Jason Siegel and Paul Rudd. During a promotional interview for the movie I Love You Man, Siegel and Rudd admitted to being totally stoned. And if you watch the interview, it's honestly not that difficult to tell. In the beginning, the pair start talking about other movies with a bromance storyline, going back and forth naming the best ones. And funny enough, all the movies they named have the word stone in it. Coincidence? I think not. The pair then start talking about Siegel's imaginary friend and can't stop laughing while thinking about it. The interview was hilarious, but I'm sure the studio was not happy with how unprofessional that it was. And at number seven, Paula Abdul. Paula Abdul had a great public reputation because of her role as a judge on American Idol. But that good reputation went down the pipes after this eyebrow raising interview. In 2007, she was live on air with Fox to talk about the upcoming season of Idol, but it was derailed almost instantly. In the interview, Paula was nothing like the woman we saw on Idol, and honestly, she seemed drunk. She was slurring her words, behaving erratically, and just acting like a basket case. Paula later denied she was drunk, and a spokesperson claimed that there was a sound issue during the segment. Two years later, the singer failed to renew her contract with American Idol and basically disappeared into obscurity. And at number six, Katherine Heigl. Katherine Heigl was blacklisted from Hollywood after she called out the director of the hit comedy, Knocked Up. In a now infamous Vanity Fair interview from 2008, Katherine Heigl slammed director Judd Apatow and called the movie a little sexist. She went on to talk more trash about her character in the film, adding, quote, it paints the women as shrews, as humorless and uptight. It paints the men as lovable, goofy, fun-loving guys. This incident, along with some other drama of the Grey's Anatomy production, put a huge axe in her career and forced her to apologize. Many years later, Heigl spoke to the Washington Post about being branded as difficult after the comments and blasted the idea that a different opinion made her difficult. She was blacklisted from the industry for a few years, but is back working again and has admitted to her past mistakes. Halfway number five, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise's reputation has taken a dive for many reasons over the years, but one moment that really shocked fans was his interview with Matt Lauer. In the interview, his temper changes dramatically, showing the world that Cruise has a very short fuse. In the 2005 interview, Lauer asked Cruise about his comments criticizing Brooke Shields for taking antidepressants for her postpartum depression. The thing that I'm saying about Brooke is that there's misinformation, okay? And she doesn't understand the history of psychiatry. She, there, she doesn't understand in the same way that you don't understand it, man. Cruz kept going on that he doesn't agree with her decisions. When asked why, Cruz added, quote, you don't know the history of psychiatry, I do. Along with getting more combative as the conversation went on. That in part with his sketchy divorce from Katie Holmes made public opinion of him tank. And at number four, Justin Bieber. An interview that Justin Bieber did with Mojo in the morning was a complete disaster for many reasons, unfortunately. It started off on the wrong foot when the interviewer said that Bieber's new music sounded like Justin Timberlake's. Later on, the interviewer asked, quote, do you worry about Harry Styles of One Direction around your mom since he likes older women? Which is a really strange question to ask someone like who would even think of that? Justin obviously thought it was very strange as well and clapped back, telling the reporter, quote, I think you should worry about me around your mom, bro. Since it was just a phone interview, Justin did not waste any more time and just hung up the phone. And at number three, Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino can be quite controversial, and a lot of his movies get some sort of backlash. After the release of his hit movie, Django Unchained, Tarantino did the media rounds to promote the movie. One reporter asked about the real-life implications of violence that the movie portrays. 
Instead of giving a thoughtful answer, Tarantino was annoyed about the question and firmly defended the movie. He replied, quote, it's just a movie, it's just a fantasy, brushing off the question. When the reporter continued to press, Tarantino just straight up refused to answer and replied, quote, I'm shutting your butt down. A little immature if you ask me. In at number two, Mark Wahlberg. Showing up drunk to a live TV interview is probably the worst thing a celebrity can do, because there's nothing worse than revealing all your secrets because you're under the influence. While Wahlberg was on the Grim Norton show, he actually admitted that he was pretty drunk, most likely from the drinks he was given backstage in the green room. Wahlberg asked Norton, quote, why would you allow people to drink alcohol and come on a show? Wahlberg tried to keep it together, but after some time, he started doing the craziest things. At one point, he sat on Norton's lap while rubbing his chest seductively. Obviously, viewers loved it, but it was very inappropriate. And finally, number one, Kourtney Kardashian. This one is super strange, and I'm not sure why this even took place, but either way, it's probably the weirdest interview moment that I have ever seen. Back in 2016, Kourtney was being interviewed on the Australian talk show Today Extra. Courtney answered some simple questions, then the reporters asked about how Kim was doing after her intense robbery situation. Courtney then started to answer, but then it looked like someone on her team started talking to her because Courtney totally ignored the question and looked off camera to someone else, then just said, okay. The reporters then asked Courtney the question again and made it seem like she might have just been breaking up or something. But then Courtney just sits there blankly looking off screen while the interviewers try to think of something else to ask her. When the host asked if someone else is talking to her, she said, yes, sorry. Then I guess the interviewers just cut Courtney's feed and got on with the program. At number 10, Vincent Gallo. You always have to be mindful of the things that you say. Your words have a lot of impact and can either make someone's day or ruin it. You must be especially careful with your words when you're trying to get ahead in your career because one wrong move can set you back significantly or even ruin your career altogether. This is what happened with actor Vincent Gallo as after one too many failed interviews, his career went down the Tubes. Vincent was known to be a little outspoken at times and he had a history of speaking without a filter, but in 2000 during an interview with a New York Post page 6 columnist, Vincent said some things about a former co-star that landed him in some hot water and effectively ended his career. During the interview, the columnist asked Vincent about Christina Ricci, who starred alongside Vincent in the 1998 film Buffalo 66, and when the actor spoke about his co-star, he didn't have the nicest things to say. He told the interviewer, quote, It was okay when she wasn't drunk on the set. I think she's an alcoholic. It was either that or she was on cough syrup the whole time. I don't like her. She's an ungrateful C word, but it was okay. She's basically a puppet. I told her what to do and she did it. End quote. After this interview, he faced some minor backlash for making such mean comments and his film career just wasn't the same after that. At number 9, John Lennon. The Beatles were a huge hit at the height of their fame, but members of the band also faced scandal and backlash as every celebrity does. John Lennon had his share of controversies, but one that did quite a lot of damage to the band's career for a little while was when he said that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. In 1966, John Lennon did an interview where he was asked all sorts of questions like how he lives and his interests and so on, but his comments on Christianity is where things got heated. In the profile, he said, quote, Christianity will go. It will vanish and shrink. I needn't to argue about that. I'm right and will be proved right. We're more popular than Jesus now. I don't know which will go first, rock and roll or Christianity. Jesus was all right, but his disciples were thick and ordinary. It's them twisting it that ruins it for me." End quote. Now, when this profile was first released in the UK, no one really thought anything of his comments about Christianity, but when the article was republished worldwide a few months later, things got messy when it hit the US. A radio station in Alabama got a hold of John's comments and proposed a ban on the Beatles, refusing to pay their music and smash their records. This anti-Beatles mindset began to spread further, angering more people, until eventually Lennon apologized and things died down, making for a chaotic few months. Now before I carry on with the list, I would like to ask you guys to consider leaving a big old thumbs up on this video if you're enjoying it so far because it really does help the channel out. At number 8, Tom Cruise. After doing an interview with Matt Lauer back in 2005, Tom Cruise had a bit of a career setback that affected him for a while. During this interview, Tom made some pretty controversial comments about mental health, psychiatry, and made some harsh criticisms about actress Brooke Shields. All of this was caused by Tom's belief in Scientology and the fact that he doesn't believe in medication or therapy. While on the Today Show, Tom and Matt were having a discussion about how the actor criticized Brooke Shields for taking antidepressants for her postpartum depression, and Tom would keep trying to show 
shut down anything Matt would say to defend psychiatry, also going on to say, quote, you don't know the history of psychiatry, I do, end quote. A lot of people took offense to the comments that he made on this topic, saying that it was uncalled for and that someone's mental health shouldn't be discussed and so he lost some support from fans. Between that and his position in the Church of Scientology, he lost a lot of popularity, leading to some box office bombs that affected his career for a while afterwards. At number 7, Miles Teller. Actor Miles Teller is a very good actor, but apparently he kinda sucks when it comes to doing interviews. He was set up to have a very promising career after starring in the 2014 award winning film Whiplash, but after a series of underwhelming interviews, his career started to decline. The first of his interview bombs came in 2014 when he spoke badly of his fellow actors where he said quote, I feel like a lot of actors of my generation are not proper actors. I want to break out of that whole group of actors in their early 20s and really start to put stuff down that lets you know I take this seriously." Unquote. Also in that same interview, he spoke harshly of actor John Kozak, where he said, quote, I guess we look alike. We did some similar movies. He was a leading man that wasn't traditionally good looking, who was offbeat and quirky but confident. I get it, but I don't want his career. End quote. The more bad interviews he gave, the more people started to see Miles as arrogant, cocky, and rude, which certainly did not help his career. At number 6, John Mayer. I feel like we really don't hear much about John Mayer these days, and that could very well be due to a 2010 interview interview that tanked his career and made him receive a lot of hate. During an interview with Playboy magazine, John made a lot of rude, crude, and racist comments that ruined his public image. At one point during the interview, John dissed his ex-girlfriend Jennifer Aniston and also spoke in too much detail about his other ex-girlfriend Jessica Simpson, and honestly, I would rather not repeat what he said because it was really gross. On top of that, John also proceeded to say the n-word several times throughout the interview as though it was a cherry on top of this whole mess. After facing a lot of backlash for what was said during the interview, he tweeted an apology but his career just wasn't really the same. At number 5, Alex Pettifer. Actor Alex Pettifer was riding a pretty good wave of success after starring in I Am Number 4 and Magic Mike, but behind the scenes he was ruffling feathers in Hollywood after he was described as quote, surly, arrogant, and disrespectful by The Hollywood Reporter. This entertainment news source exposed what Alex was really like after someone who worked with him on set came forward to share their horror stories with the actor. At one point Alex's career took a pretty big hit, but things became worse after Alex did an interview with V-Man magazine that really set his career back. During this interview he called out the entirety of Hollywood where he said quote, LA is growing on me a little bit but it's still a hole. I think it's this insidious pool where nearly everyone lives in fear. Geographically it's fantastic but socially it's disgusting. I wish they'd run all the C words out. End quote. After these harsh words and the fact that he's a nightmare to work with, Alex's career just wasn't the same. He wasn't welcomed back to reprise his role in the Magic Mike sequel and since then he hasn't really been a part of any major projects in the industry. At number 4, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf has been having a pretty rough time in Hollywood lately. A few months ago, he was facing backlash after his ex-girlfriend, FKA Twigs, issued a lawsuit against the actor for physically harming her, but before that, Shia had also faced backlash for his unruly behavior both on and off set. What really did him in at one point was an interview he did back in 2008 where he blasted Steven Spielberg after working on Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. This movie itself got mixed reviews at the time of its release, but Shia criticized the film's director and that's when the hate began for the actor. He told the Los Angeles Times, quote, I think the audience is pretty intelligent. I think they know when you've made crap and I think if you don't acknowledge it, then why do they trust you the next time you're promoting a movie? End quote. He also went on to say, quote, I'll probably get a call, but Spielberg needs to hear this. I love him. I love Steven. I have a relationship with Steven that supersedes our business work and believe me, I talk to him often enough to know that I'm not out of line. And I would never disrespect the man. I think he's a genius. I think he's given me my whole life. He's done so much great work that there's no need for him to feel vulnerable about one film. But when you drop the ball, you drop the ball. End quote. Shia ripped on the director later on in 2016 as well, but at that point, the damage was already done. Looks like you can't criticize one of Hollywood's greatest directors and come out unscathed. At number 3, Wilmer Valderrama. Back in 2006, that 70s show actor Wilmer Valderrama was a guest on Howard Stern's show and he said some things that he surely regretted saying because after this interview, his career took took a pretty big hit. While on the show, the actor shared some information about his private life that frankly, nobody asked for and was very inappropriate. The actor exposed a lot of details about the people that he slept with, going on to reveal that he had slept with Mandy Moore, and even described the experience that no one really needed to know about. He also went on to rate his relationship with actress Jennifer Love Hewitt, and again, 
nobody needed that information. Wilmer just really exposed a lot of personal information about himself, but faced scrutiny because of how the people he talked about were impacted. A lot of people pointed out how the comments he made were uncalled for, uncomfortable, and inappropriate. It took the actor years to issue an apology for what he said during that interview, but by that time, the damage to his career was already done, and he never quite bounced back. At number two, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen was riding a pretty good wave back when he was a star of Two and a Half Men, but after his horrible interview on 2020, his career was destroyed and he never fully recovered. After having a hugely successful career, making millions of dollars per season on Two and a Half Men, actor Charlie Sheen started to have a downward spiral. Everything sort of came crashing down for him after the interview where he ranted about the Two and a Half Men creator, Chuck Lore. This interview was all over the place with Charlie behaving frantically, going on tangents, and even calling Chuck Lore, quote, a turd and a clown. This interview was all over the news because it was chaotic, Charlie was put on blast, and his career just came to a screeching halt. Not only that, but as a result of the comments Charlie made during the interview, he was fired from Two and a Half Men, and that was a pretty big deal since this is how he was pulling in so much money. The actor pretty much hit rock bottom after that and never really made his return. And finally at number one, Megan Fox. Megan Fox is only now starting to make her way back to Hollywood after she was essentially blacklisted from the industry after she faced backlash for speaking badly about Michael Bay in an interview. Megan criticized the Transformers director during a 2009 interview with Wonderland Magazine when she was asked about what it was like to work with Michael Bay. In response to the question, Megan told the source, quote, he's a nightmare to work with, but when you get him away from set, he's not in director mode. I kind of really enjoy his personality because he's so awkward, so hopelessly awkward. He has no social skills at all and it's endearing to watch him. He's vulnerable and fragile in real life, then on set he's a tyrant. Shy and I almost die when we make Transformers movies. He has you do some really insane things that insurance would never let you do." End quote. Because of what she said, Michael Bay fired her from future Transformers films and made Hollywood turn against her by telling them that Megan was a nightmare to work with. She had a hard time making it in Hollywood until recently when she came out to reveal the truth about how she was being treated in the industry. She's on her way back to Hollywood's good graces, but for a while there, her career was ruined. In at number 10, Tom Hiddleston. Back in June of 2016, it was announced that America's favorite villain, Mr. Tom Hiddleston, was romantically involved with Taylor Swift. They were dubbed a celebrity name of Hiddle Swift and all seemed, well, well and good. Although in August of 2016, they were fighting over his scheduling with Thor Ragnarok in Australia. Then by September of 2016, they were over and both sides alleged that they dumped the other one. Tom said it was because he wanted to go more public with their relationship and Taylor Swift alluded to another reason for it ending in a song of hers, I guess. Either way, Tom was a bit shaken up by the whole situation and during an interview with GQ magazine, he kind of burned himself. I mean, he was trying to distract from the topic of Swift by sharing his recipe for bolognese, but Tom still managed to talk way too much about Taylor Swift. Even after the interview had finished, he apparently visited the reporter's door at 6 a.m. to further clarify things that he had said about her in the interview. In at number nine, Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton not only became famous for being being the great granddaughter of the guy who created Hilton Hotels, but she also invented the idea of influencers. She would tell the paparazzi where she was going to be and then end up all over page six whenever she did something crazy at a nightclub. Although she also had a brief stint acting in reality TV shows. In fact, for a while, she believed that she was the world's top reality TV star, even though her former friend Kim Kardashian was kind of on the come up. During one interview with ABC in 2011, she was doing her very best to stay calm as a reporter grilled her with questions meant to discount her worth and society. Then Paris was asked by the reporter if she felt like her career was over. And in response, she just walked right out of the interview. I mean, people were already feeling that her career was done, but nobody, I had guess, had the heart to tell her. So when she found out just as much, she left the interview, which kind of answered the question for us. In at number eight, Kathy Lee Gifford. Kathy is best known for her 15 year run on the talk show Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, which she co-hosted with Regis Filmin. She has also done some acting in a few films, but her primary focus has been working for live entertainment news shows. Although after she maybe had one too many glasses of wine, I don't know, I think they do a Today Show happy hour, she conducted a very embarrassing interview with Martin Short. Martin was coming on the Today Show to promote and it looks like Kathy didn't do her research beforehand. Martin's wife had passed away two years prior to the interview and Gifford had no clue. She threw multiple questions about his wife and his relationship, but at no point did he have a chance to actually correct her. Although right before the commercial break, he definitely had to update her. I mean, she 
apparently profusely apologized for this big gaffe, but her career was already tanked at that point. And if not her career, at least her reputation. Hit at number seven, Crispin Glover. While Crispin Glover has never really been considered a typical leading man, he has certainly distinguished himself as one of the more intriguing personalities in Hollywood. His unusual characters and personal projects have inspired a cult-like following that has dubbed him both a madman and a genius. However, an interview back in 1987 stunted his career a little bit and we wouldn't see him on many late night interviews for a while. While speaking with David Letterman, Crispin showed up as Reuben. Reuben was a character that he was portraying in an upcoming film called Reuben and Ed. Although not a single soul told Letterman that this was the intended plan, so he was completely surprised when it happened. Sometimes that works, I mean, but in this case it was a disaster. The entire interview was just Dave trying to keep up with Crispin and his Reuben rants, but ultimately ended in Letterman just walking out of the interview. In at number six, Gary Coleman. First and foremost, rest in peace Gary Coleman. It, it was terrible to see this great actor's career be taken down and then ridiculed when he had to go get a regular job. I mean, before he passed, Gary did an interview in 2010 with The Insider and things got very heated. One of those hosts started asking him questions about his ex-wife Susan Price, but Coleman did not take this well. He began yelling expletives at the mortified host as he immediately departed the interview. It must have been a very touchy subject, but this is also a reminder of why it's important to brief guests with the questions that they'll be asked. I mean, these curveballs from reporters rarely lead to anything good, and Gary's interview is kind of proof of that. In at number five, Cara Delevingne. Let's just say her dry British humor was not really received by these happy-go-lucky morning news anchors at CBS Sacramento. I mean, at the start of the interview, she was asked some very dumb questions. I mean, for example, the film Paper Towns was based on a book, so they asked her if she had read the book, and then immediately after made a snide comment about her probably not having enough time to read. Now, Cara obviously takes offense to this, judging by her body language, but instead decides to flip it into a joke, saying that she didn't even read the script, just winged it. Uh, no, I never read the book or the script, actually. I kind of winged it. And the interview is actually take this as factual for a moment before her laughing kind of cuts the tension. That's not even the most awkward part of this interview, though. I think it probably is us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, then on that note... We figured as much. We figured as much. We'll let you go, then. How about that? Right. We'll let you go take a little nap, maybe get a Red Bull. How about that? <laughs> After one interviewer asked her why she isn't as excited as her other interviews, she remarks that it's very early and that she thought it was going well, so again, jokingly, she said, it must be you. And the lady in the middle, oh my god, she sounded so bitter. We'll let you take a little nap and have a Red Bull? How about that? Yes. How about that level of professional journalism? Good morning, Sacramento. <laughs> Although ever since this interview, we haven't really seen Kara in any more movies, and even the ones that we have seen her in, it was like, yeah, well, uh, whatever. In at number four, Robert Pattinson. When the Twilight series was at its peak, Rob had to do a ton of press to promote the film, and his agent made it expressly clear to every single interviewer not to mention his rumored relationship. People were already speculating that Pattinson was dating co-star Kristen Stewart, but they definitely wanted to keep things as private as possible. However, when he went on air with Ryan Seacrest, things went sideways. As soon as Seacrest started asking about his rumored relationship, Rob's agent gave him the cue to leave the interview. Now, this didn't exactly destroy destroy his career, but it certainly put a bad light on the actor for being kind of so dodgy with questions. I mean, if he had have just stayed in the interview and just told Ryan that he didn't want to talk about it, I bet Ryan would have just moved on. I mean, Seacrest has been in that business for so long that he knows how to keep things professional. But I guess he missed the memo on not talking about the relationship thing. <laughs> what can you tell them about it? I also just love that you can see his agent in the back giving the old wrap it up signal to Ryan and he is definitely ignoring her. In at number three, Jim Carrey. While at the New York Fashion Week in 2017, Jim Carrey made a rare appearance and while walking down the red carpet, he did his best to avoid an interview with E! News. At first he kind of tried to twirl around a few times and not really stand still hoping that would work, but man, she was persistent. Carrey then says that he wanted to find the most meaningless event that he could go to and that's how he ended ended up there. The interviewer tries to keep the integrity of the event high and claims that it's a celebration of icons, for which Jim says, icons don't exist. I don't believe in personalities. I don't believe you exist. But there is a wonderful fragrance in the air. Before departing from this awkward interview, he leaves her with this nugget of truth. It's not our world. 
None That's of this is key. real? Nope. It was a while before we saw Jim Carrey again after that, but we're sure he wants it that way. I mean, it probably made keeping the Sonic live action film quiet a lot easier. In at number two, Mel Gibson. While promoting his film Edge of Darkness in a 2010 interview with WGN TV, Mel Gibson appeared like he really didn't want to be there. I mean, the best part was that he wasn't even physically there. He just was appearing via satellite because it was probably the fastest way to do this press run. Although among all of the questions that annoyed the actor, it was when he dove into Gibson's drinking that kind of really set him off. The reporter got even more bold by asking him about his previous anti-Semitic remarks, to which Mel replied that was four years ago and he had already apologized for that and the reporter sensing that Mel was about to cuss him out on live air, he kind of shifted back to promoting the film. Good move. Although Mel Gibson thought that the interview had disconnected, which resulted in some very troubling remarks to air live. Thanks a lot for joining us, Mel. Take care. Bye bye. Last but certainly not least on our number one spot, Courtney Love. Courtney Love has been a mess forever. She does not handle interviews with any ounce of grace, and her crashing an interview with Madonna kind of proves my point. Back at the 1995 MTV VMAs, the interviewer was engaged in a discussion with Madonna when he notices Courtney Love yelling from down below. He then invites her onto the interview platform, even at the behest of Madonna, and things immediately turn to the worst case scenario. She starts drunkenly throwing small items at Madonna, and then she kneels down on the ground, and at that point, Madonna just walks off the stage. Courtney then stays and hijacks the entire interview, going on more drunken rants and just being generally all over the place. I mean, literally all over the place. And it turns out the guy should have just listened to Madonna and had security keep Courtney back. Then we wouldn't have had this. 